Hey there, everyone. It's Carrie from Carrie's Wreath Creations. Hope everyone is doing well today on this Monday, March 13th. We are getting close to 6.45 p.m. Eastern. So if you are watching, not at that time, you're watching a replay. Um, I did not give any warning that I was going live, so not sure who might find me, but I'm going to give people a second to hop on if they did notice I was live. I'm going to get myself situated here so I can... Don't want to listen to myself. I'm going to get myself situated though so I can see comments. And I always, always, always have trouble with this, so just give me one second. There we go. Okay, it says no comments yet. I'm hoping that's correct. Okay, so um, I have not been live in a while, so I'm a little out of practice, but glad to see whoever is able to find me and join. Um, today we are going to be making a summer, spring, summer inspired flower, and um, we're going to be using four different colors of mesh. We're going to be using the small Unique in the Creek wreath board. I'm going to present this as if you are a beginner. So um, if you're someone who's more experienced, there's really no need to tell me in the comments that I talk too much. I'm trying to keep it as concise as possible, but I'm doing what I need to do in order to explain this to beginning wreath makers. Um, so we are going to be using Polly Burlap today. Polly Burlap comes in lots of different colors. It is my preferred um, material for making flower style wreaths and we are going to be using four different colors. I have a bunch of petals already made um, but then I will sh I'll also show you the petal fold as well. Um, so this is the petal. It's um, what if you are familiar with Lori from Unique in the Creek, um, she came up with this petal. She was calling it the claw petal. Don't know if that's an official name or not but essentially it is the Rita petal if you're familiar with the Rita petal but um, kind of just crossing, doing like a crisscross of the two petals, or, or the two sides of the petal, I should say. But we're going to be using, this is peach, might not be coming up as peach on your screen, but it is peach. Uh, we're going to be using turquoise, and this is yellow, and this is mint green, okay? So those are the colors we're using, and I have my center pre-made. It is um, just a corded rope in white, um, I buy the corded rope at Hobby Lobby and it is just on half of a four inch styrofoam ball. So I pre-made this. If you are new to me, I have lots of video tutorials um, that show you how to make different centers. Um, I was going for, I feel like this is a little bit of like a beachy kind of theme with these colors. We kind of have like the water colors and the sun colors and then I don't know, it just, it's, I was kind of thinking of like a beach ball for some reason when I came up with this combination, but need to add some spring and summer to my shop. This could definitely pass for spring or summer, I think, with these colors. Got some blue strands on here. Um, okay, so we're going to be using a small Unique in the Creek board, and if you are not familiar with these, they're, they come in all sizes, um, shapes and sizes. There's a small and a large wreath flower board, which I'm using the small one. Um, and then there's a large one and there's like different shapes, like there's a rectangle, there's a cross, there's a other ones I can't think of, ring board, oval, all kinds. So if you are interested in the boards, check out my pinned post on my Facebook page, which has links to the, my, it has my affiliate link for Unique in the Creek. So I do earn a very small commission there if you do use that link to purchase. And I'm very appreciative of that and appreciative too. Uh, unique in the Creek for having that program available, um, but you can get the boards there. Uh, you can get all kinds of materials. I don't know which colors exactly they have in stock. They may have all these. They may not, but they have other ones to choose from as well. I do use six inch zip ties. I buy those on Amazon. Um, some of my other supplies are also from Amazon. Um, so if you're new to the board, um, they are, the rows are labeled one, two, three, and four. I don't use row one. It's a personal preference. I like the size that comes out uh, for this particular style of wreath that I'm going to do. I'm going to do a swirl flower. Um, I like to start on row two. Personal preference, you can make it bigger by adding row one. You can use a large board and make a bigger flower. I like my flowers to be somewhere in the 21 to 24 inch uh, range. That's my personal preference and what I like to um, aim for in terms of shipping, like how I calculate all my ship, shipping costs and things like that. That's the size I want my wreath to be, okay? So it's a little easier for maybe to, you to see on the back where I put the zip ties. So 
basically this was row one, which is empty. This is the top of the board. Okay, row two, what I'm doing here, and I kind of figured out a little trick to doing the swirl flower um, it, without having like, because I was drilling extra holes, or actually I was using my wood burner to make extra holes, and you don't actually need to do that. You can make a swirl flower using row one if you want, but again, me not wanting to use row one, I was like doing some Something I decided now, after doing it for months, was a little silly. I can you can do this swirl flower. What I with only with using the holes that are already there. So on row two, I do have a zip tie, not in the pair of holes, but in the ones all the other sets. So like the pair of holes is the closer together ones. So and then you have like this extra one in the middle. So my zip ties are going from one of those uh, pair of holes to that, that middle hole, and then from the middle hole to the next one, then I'm not doing one in this pair, and so on and so forth, okay? It'll all work out in the end when we do our little swirl. You're gonna get a swirl design doing it like this. Um, maybe not 100% exact, but good enough to, like it, 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 you'd have to really scrutinize to see that it's not, maybe some of the spacing is a teeny little bit off. Um, row three, you're going to use every pair of holes and every set of shared holes. So a shared hole is between the pair and the next pair. So all of those, and then you're going to be using, um, all the pairs and shared holes in row four. Okay. So it's going to be a total of 40 petals. It's 16, 16, and eight. Okay. So, um, we're going to start with you got to fold some petals. Let's do that first. So if you're here to see the petal, you'll get that done and you can be on your merry way. If you want to see the whole wreath put together, you can stick around. Um, okay, so let me find the, there's the numbers. Here are the numbers. This is the top of the board here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so what I'm going to, where I'm going to be starting is, so here's the number two. I'm starting to the, starting directly to the left of that. Okay, and when you want it, if you want it to be a swirl, you do need to like follow the right pattern or else it's all over the place, okay? So the number two I'm using, so it's this right here. It's where I'm starting. Here's the number two. This one is where my first petal is gonna go. And I'm doing it in this order. I'm doing peach, turquoise, yellow, and mint green. So I have my poly burlap cut 10 by 10. Did use a wood burning tool. Highly recommend you do that if you're working with poly burlap, especially a petal like this where you do see the exposed edges. I have my zip tie gun. This is available on Amazon. I do have an Amazon affiliate shop. I'm going to be use, utilizing these clips that are from the dollar store. Okay, so 10 by 10. <clears throat> Still a little bit curly. I did try to flatten it a little, but curl side up. Here are my factory edges. Here are my cut edges. I'm just paying attention to that because I do want all my petals to look the same. I'm going to just turn it into a diamond shape, so I'm turning it to the right. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold it into a triangle by bringing the bottom up to meet the top. Now for this petal, the edges, the corners of your triangle are what's most important to line up to make your, your petal look neat and pretty. This top part is going to get scrunched up so it doesn't matter if it's aligning exactly at the top. You want it to align on the sides, which is why I use the clip. So I'm just going to make sure these are nice and crisp, nice and folded. Go ahead and put my clip one on each side. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to, but just know that when you start scrunching your material, you might, it might get a little off and you might not have this a perfect petal. So then when I kind of flatten this, this one's lining up pretty well, but again, not perfect. And that's okay because you're not going to see that part. So now starting at the middle of the bottom, we're going to scrunch up towards the top and you're just kind of gab gabbing, gathering the same amount of material each time you scrunch. Okay, so I have this. Now, again, if you're familiar with petal folding, to make the Rita petal, all you do is bring these two ends together and pinch, and that's your Rita petal, okay? You can also do a half Rita petal, which would be to um, like put a, a rubber band or a clip or something here, cut these two in half, cut them in half so you have two separate petals, and then you could have each of these petals, put them in the board so they all face the same direction. That's an option, okay? Um, but what we're gonna do, and this is what Lori did to make this, what she called the claw petal. I'm taking this, and what I'm gonna do is take, you can do this one over this one, or this one over this one. I will tell you, I will give you one little tip after I do this, but I 
I'm kind of mad at myself, but I have like 36 petals already made. And so I'm going to do them all the same. So I'm going to take this right here, this bottom one, and you're just going to kind of pick it up a little and put it up and over the one over here that's laying down. Okay. Now you might need to adjust a little where you're pinching because the whole point of this petal to make it look nice and neat, I'm going to take my clips off. You do want this to be lined up because if it's not, if like one's like, if this one ends up like way down here, it's going to look really wonky. So adjust, adjust where you're pinching. If that's happening, maybe you got to pinch not exactly in the center, but you got to shift your shift over a little bit. Okay. Just however you need to, to make this nice and straight. Okay. And then once it is, I'm going to put this into the board. So I said I was starting right here. So that's where this is going to go. Okay. And uh, just about a fingertip width in and my zip ties, the board does not come with the zip ties for beginners. You have to put them on yourself and all you do is just put them in until they latch like once just to keep them in place. They should make a nice clicking noise. If they don't, you have them in backwards. Okay. So there's my pedal. All right. So if for some reason, like if you ended up, I don't know if it needs to be pulled over more, just make sure you do that. Cause you don't really want to see this part. So if that's happening, just move it over. I think when I was doing this earlier, this is three inches for me. So if you want to do that, like as a measurement to make them all the same, you can do that too. Um, so that works. Now, I will tell you why I'm a little mad at myself and how I did this pedal. Okay. So because I of the way I twisted the one over the other, this right here, right here, is the cut edge. And the factory edge is in the back. And then on this back part of the pedal, the factory edge is here. And then the cut edge is on the back. So it's not that big of a deal, but this is showing a little bit more, this side. So I kind of wish I would have done it the opposite way and made this where the factory edge is in the front and this one where the factory edge is in the back. There's no way to have, at least that I can think of, no way to have both factory edges showing unless you do some sort of twisting, which I don't want to do any more than what I'm already doing. Um, so that's what we're, that's what we're, we're doing here. I realize that you can, no, you can't really see the wreath is hanging on the, on the door back there is the same pedal. And I did it the other way. And I'm like, why did I do one, one way and the other, the other way? I don't know why I did that, but anyways, um, let's do another pedal. So again, curl side up, okay, and turn it into a diamond shape, fold into a truck. So another way to avoid, if you wanted to have that factory edge on the top, I think if you turn it, I'm always turning to the right, I don't, I'm just right-handed, so that's more comfortable, but I think some people would turn it this way, and I think you would maybe end up with the factory edge on the, um, on the top, on that top pedal. So again, just clip your ends here to keep those together while you're scrunching. This one's kind of an extra curly piece. All right, and then from the center up towards the top, just scrunch, okay? So here's my petal. Here's the, so here's the factory edge. What would, I don't know, if you wanted to, you know, kind of do the opposite of what I did, you would just put this petal over this pedal. I feel like it's a little more awkward to work with it like that, but to each his own. Okay. So again, now I'm kind of, I'm, for me, it's easier to switch my grip like this so that I can really give this like a twist up and over this other pedal. And again, if it looks like it's too going to end up being not even, I'll readjust my grip there. Um, and I'm looking for about three inches. Just like that. Sorry, I was measuring at the bottom of my board. Um, and then that is going to go right into zip tie. If you have any questions, let me know. Or let me know where you're watching from or if you're new. Haven't been live in a while. Lost my mojo for it a little bit. But all my replays are available on YouTube. So if you're new, definitely go check out the YouTube channel. So once again, to reiterate, we did, here's number two. The number two, we did a pedal to the left of it. And now we did a pedal to the right of it. We are doing two and then going through the whole combination and then we'll do the same, repeat the same thing. So we're going to do turquoise. I do have all the other colors already done. So um, 
I have all the, the other three colors, I have all the petals already done. So we're just going through, this will be a total of 16 petals on this row. So this is a, you know, fairly decently easy petal. And if you learn the Rita petal, it's kind of nice because you can do a few different things with it. So you can just do the classic Rita petal. I use that for um, my um, poinsettias and a couple other wreaths that I do. Um, and so it's like that nice pointed, pe pointed petal. I've seen it called a pointed daisy petal as well. I'm just repeating the pattern now. So two of each color. So I get all the way around. Um, and then the, uh, you can cut it in half and make them all, make all your, um, like points go the same direction. There is a way to do that without cutting. You just end up with two petals. That would be the, I think Lori calls it the Bubba petal, um, which I do very similar to her. I don't know if it's exactly the same as the way she does hers, but. I was actually, I think I was actually doing it a little differently until she made a video and I'm like, I already sort of do that petal, just not exactly like that. So, all right. So you don't have a whole lot of overlap in this row. I mean, a little bit, I guess, but not a ton, but when we get to these inner rows, you'll have, the, your petals are gonna overlap a little bit. And, um, this last one here, let's see what this looks like when I put it in, because when you get overlap, you want them to all overlap in the same direction. So basically, they're, they're not really overlapping that much, but I'm just gonna tuck this back here because it is kind of, that's sort of the pattern, okay? So that is our first row, 16 petals, okay? Now let me, again, your zip tie gun, if you don't have one of these, it's my favorite tool that I, it wasn't aware of until late in the game, but it will um, tighten. If your zip tie needs to be tightened, it will tighten it and then it'll clip it. So if you're having to do the trigger twice, it probably means you didn't pull it tight enough. Like that one I had to, that one wasn't tight enough. So it tightened it and now it clips it. So very easy to use. And I, I just, I don't like having another tool out. Like I see a lot of people use um, like pliers or something to pull the zip ties tight. I don't know. I mean, I guess I, I lucky, I still have like good finger strength, so I don't need that. Um, I do get sometimes, depending how many wreaths I make in a day, I'll get some fun calluses on my, uh, on these fingers, but, um, I just, I don't want another, yet another tool on my, um, on my table. So this is nice because if it's not quite tight enough, if I'm not doing it manually tight enough, this will help. Okay, so now we're gonna do the next row. So we are still gonna stick with our two of each color, but we're doing, again, a swirl. So we need to get that aligned the way it needs to be. So if you are looking at your board, this is row three now, okay? And we have, again, zip ties in every pair and every uh, shared set of holes, okay? Now, the best way to describe this, so referring to row four, which is this inner row, okay, there's like a pair at 12, three, six, and nine for like on a clock. So this pair right here that's kind of going directly, would have your petal going directly to the left, we're going to just go diagonal to that set of uh, holes in row three. That's where we're going to start with our peach. Okay, so basically in row three, there's no pair at the top. There's a pair to the left, then you have your shared, then the next pair. That's where we're starting. I hope that's a good explanation because it's not like I didn't like label them any better than that. But the pair of holes that's two to the left, second to the left of the number three. Okay, the actual pair, not the shared. Let's, um, I'm going to move this out of the way and do a few more petals in case you're just joining. I do need to make, I think, let's see, I have four. Uh, I need to make a couple more. So let's do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Okay, I need to make two more. So let's go ahead and do those. So if you, um, I, I only just very recently ordered this peach color. Okay, so I didn't even fold this really into a triangle. I just know that I have to line up these um, corners. So I almost like don't even bother with the triangle until after I get my clips on. Um, I only recently bought the peach and very recently brought, bought the mint color. So they're really pretty, um, especially the, I, well, both of them are. Um, if you're looking for some new colors, I made the investment to get some some colors that I didn't have yet, and these were two of them. So now you're scrunching from the middle up towards the top, okay, just like that. There's your Rita petal. If you were to bring these two together and pinch, like right here, that's your Rita petal, okay? But we're taking it one more step to um, take, where I'm gonna take this one right here and over, up and over the petal next to it, just like that, okay? Kind of looking at, if I need to readjust where I'm pinching, take these off. This looks a little wide, so I might want to bring this one back a little bit. Again, I'm aiming for three inches for consistency, okay? Bring this back, okay? And again, so here's the number three. Here's a pair of holes to the left. Here's the next pair, not the shared ones, the next pair right there. Okay, let me make one more. I did just post, or not post, I recorded earlier today a bunch of petal tutorials. So I have a lot of, a lot of times when I post pictures of things, people say, what petal is that? And I just thought it would be helpful if I have just, just petal tutorials, not even like making a whole wreath. If you just want to see the how to make the petal. So I recorded a bunch of those today. They all need to make it onto YouTube, but that's where you will be able to find them. Uh, I will not be posting those on Facebook. They'll be right to YouTube. This replay will be on YouTube. I'm actually looking to sort of transition everything over to YouTube um, for a number of reasons, but um, that's sort of my plan. So it's also just easier for people to search on YouTube. I can make playlists as opposed to trying to scroll back through all my videos and dig through all my daily posts and pictures and all this other stuff to try to find these lives. YouTube is just much more friendly to that kind of thing. So that's one reason. Um, but those will be available. I mean, as soon as I can get to posting all of them, I do like to be somewhat detailed in my um, descriptions and things to make them easier for people to find. So this one just looked a little off. I just need to like turn it a little bit. Um, okay, so that's our first two peach. So you can see our swirl is starting. Okay, we're swirling colors in this direction. Okay, so now let's add the turquoise. Any questions, let me know. Chat is quiet, but that's okay. Don't need to have a whole lot of comments if you're all good to go and understanding what I'm doing. Yeah, my it's Carrie's Wreath Creations on YouTube. So YouTube, um, uh, they re, uh, was recent, I think, where they they gave everyone a handle. So like, you know, like at whatever. So mine's at Carrie's Wreath Creations. Same name as um, Facebook. So makes it easy to find me. And you can also find that if you go again to the pinned post, under, you gotta go back to my main page. So if you're not looking to lose this video, don't go there yet. But if you go to my main page, the pinned post is the very first post marked with like a little yellowish orange bookmark type thing in the upper right corner. And that's where I have all of my kind of important information, my links to things, um, affiliate links, if you're looking for the boards, um, supplies, things like that. Those are all found in that pinned post. So that's where you find that. And of course, if you click the shop now button, you're gonna go to my Etsy shop where you can buy anything that you see me making. There's, I don't think anything, honestly, that I've made on a live that I haven't had for sale. I think everything. And I am trying to do my, 
my business model of sorts for this this year is to do more wreaths that I can duplicate. So if something sells on Etsy, I can repost it and sell another one because Etsy does do, if you're on Etsy, um, having those multiples, wreaths that you can sell over and over, those tend to do pretty well because once the listing is found and sold and you sell it once, it's much more likely somebody's gonna find it again. So um, that's what I'm trying to get more into doing as opposed to having these one-off wreaths that I can't make again, kind of why I got away from ribbons and signs and stuff, um, those types of wreaths, because I usually only buy enough for one wreath and then I can't make it again. And honestly, it's just <laughs> better space saving in my house if I have these wreaths that I can duplicate. So I don't actually need to have one on hand. I can, if somebody orders it, as long as I have the supplies and I, I know what my turnaround time is, I can just make it when I get the order in. So it's more of like a made to order um, model that I'm trying to get to this year, um, as opposed to having like 40 wreaths in my, well, let's be honest, 40 wreaths in my house that probably way more than that sometimes. I'm trying to get that under control. I'm doing a pretty good job, I think have a couple of bestsellers that sell over and over. A lot of everyday wreaths um, that I sell over and over again. So this one will be, I'll, I'll be able to make this more than one of this one too. I have all these colors. I'm gonna keep them all in stock, at least for all of um, spring and summer. Okay, so this last one, these are over, these petals do overlap on this row a bit. So I do need to, when I put this in, I'm gonna tuck it behind this peach one here. I don't know if you can see, but that's what I'm about to do. So I'm going to put this in. And then I just need to adjust those so that I'm following the same overlapping pattern as I put these in. So just tuck that like that. Okay. So, oops, I'll take a couple of these off already. All right, so moving right along. If you're joining late, um, I'm not doing any more petal folds, so I have to go back and watch the replay. Apologies there, but basically what we're doing is what Lori from Unique in the Creek has called the claw petal. It's basically the Rita petal with, um, kind of doing a crisscross of the, the two, um, sides of the petal. So now we are on to our last row here. We're going to put eight petals in. Okay, so where's that gonna go? So again, oops, missed one of these. Um, we're doing our, our swirl. Where's the top? Here's the top, right? Yeah, sorry. Okay, so here's the top of the board right here, okay? These were the two that we started with, okay? So when we put in our last row to get, to do the, um, the swirl here, so we're gonna, we want a, a peach one here. So on the board, that means that here's the number four, okay? There's a pair of holes there. We want the pair of holes that's at, let's, we'll call that nine o'clock, okay? 12, three, six, nine, that, that pair of holes, okay? So it's gonna lay right there and it's gonna give us our nice swirl. How do I decide what color will go where? Um, well, the order of the colors, I just lay them out until I like the way, like the pattern that they're going in. As far as the layout, um, I, well, honestly, this, I've done these swirl flowers quite a bit. I saw someone make one. I kind of adapted it for my own needs. Um, I, you know, like I said, I wanted to have, before I want them to be on a small board, I want them to not use row one so that they're not huge. This wreath is gonna be, um, 23 inches. I don't, uh, that's all I want to, I don't want to do bigger wreaths than that. Meet personal preference. So that's how this is lays out best on the board is with using these holes and I want the swirl. I know I've done so many swirls. I know what, where they need to go. You can map it out however works for you. On this inner row, we're only doing one at a time. So we're going to alternate um, just one petal of each color. And, you know, you can certainly, that's the nice thing about these flower wreaths. I mean, you can learn a petal and then you can do a wreath 
any, you could do a whole bunch of wreaths and they'll all end up looking different with that same petal because it's all about how you lay it out on the board. Um, I mean, I do wreaths where I do, you know, row two is all one color and row three is all one color or a, a different color. Um, I do wreaths that are all, all one color, like by poinsettias that are red, they're all red, um, all red Rita petals, but, um, it's just whatever you want. I, I, you know, I do wreaths where they, the petals, I mix and match petals. So, you know, you learn a couple petals, you sort of just figure out ones. I mean, I have petal preferences for sure. Like you will never see me doing a Star Trek petal or a lolly petal. If you know your petals, uh -uh, they're not for me. I won't do them. Um, not that they're not beautiful. I just don't like them doing them. I don't, it's not enjoyable. This is supposed to be fun. So I do petals that I like to do, um, that I think look nice that I feel like I've perfected to some extent, you know, sure. Not, a, not, not everything I do is 100% perfect, but you know, I do what works for me. So, but you mix and match those and you and everyone ends up with something that looks really nice and unique. Thanks, Teresa. Um, I hope I answered your question. It's a little, that was a little roundabout answer, but I saw someone do a swirl petal flower, swirl flower, made it work for me, basically is how I came up with this pattern. Um, there's really no, no super magic way to do it. This last one, again, we are have a little bit of overlap on this row, so I'm going to make sure it's get it's it gets tucked behind this peach petal. So yeah, going back to those new, I don't know if they're really new colors. They're certainly not colors that I had bought before. So like the peach was new to me. The mint green was new to me. I also just bought, I bought fresh green, which is very pretty as well, especially for like summer, spring, summer. Um, it is, it's brighter than lime green, which doesn't really make sense to me with the name fresh green, lime green to me, lime green sounds like it should be brighter, but fresh green is actually brighter. I bought eucalyptus green, which is really nice for like a neutral wreath. What else did I buy? I love the smoke blue and the hunter green. Uh, one of my best selling wreaths has the smoke blue in it. Um, what else? I feel like there was another one. I'm looking at the wreaths I made to see if I'm missing a color. Oh, I did buy um, Brick, Brick Red. I haven't used it yet because I feel like it's a little more for fall, but it's like this nice, like, deep orangey red color. So I feel like that'll be good for fall. I pretty much have every color out there by now. Every color of the rainbow. I think I'm missing a few, but... Um, all right, so there is... Here's the top of the board again, up here where my hand is, okay? So here, there's our swirl, okay? Now, once I get this hung up and I'm ready to take a picture, if I see like, oh, this needs to like go over a little or let's, you know, if, if I feel like this, I look at, the way I look at this is I look at the swirls, of the same colors, like the yellow. Is there something that looks out of place? Can I make a small adjustment to a petal to really get that swirl happening? Then I, I do that when I, you know, you can manipulate them a little bit once they're already in here, um, when, like when I go to take my pictures. So now we're going to add our center. Don't have anything more exciting for this. I mean, I feel like I wanted to, it's, it's, this is giving it a little bit of a rustic -y kind of vibe. Also sort of like a nautical look because I feel like these are sort of like beachy colors. Not like, I don't know. I just, I like, I feel like it's the. The peach is almost like a coral, so like the coral color with the yellow is kind of like a sunset, and then the mint green and the turquoise. So on the back here, all I did was take my pipe cleaner and go through opposite set of holes. The smoke blue is really pretty. It looks really nice with gray. Um, <clears throat> it's like a, I don't know, it's it's a... It, it, it really, it, it kind of is what it sounds like. It's like a grayish blue color, but with like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's really pretty. And actually, I, like I have a wreath on my door right now. Those colors, the smoke blue, the gray, white, and black, like perfectly matches the outside of my house. So it, it's like a good neutral everyday wreath because it sort of matches my outdoor colors. 
So all I did was I twisted this and then I just sort of went back under the zip tie and I'm just tucking these in to make this flat back here. Okay, so there is our flower. Last step would be, be to put the hanger on. I realize I never show how I do the hanger. So I use fish line. It's meant to hold 30 pounds, so this thing ain't going anywhere. Um, you can use twine, you can use another zip tie. I use this. So I go back to my top. The top is right here. Okay, here are my hanging holes. I didn't use row one, so I could go through these two or I could go through these two. It doesn't really matter. And so I just feed this through and I tie it in a knot. I had someone on, someone by a wreath on Etsy and they're like, I love this wreath. I just wish the hanger wasn't so flimsy. And the, it, it's not, it holds 30 pounds. So, uh, you know, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna break, you know, twine. I feel like that could, you know, sort of disintegrate over time. I just don't like the zip tie for a hanger. I feel like it, it, the whole point is for this to lay flat and sometimes the zip tie just, just doesn't work for me. It just doesn't work for me, long story short. And then I just tie a knot back here, which of course I'm struggling with because I'm trying to do it quick. I'm off camera, I realize. But I just wanna get a knot in here so I can make a loop. Oh my goodness, should have made it longer. Well, anyways, you get the idea. Let me take, look at this pretty wreath while I try to finish this off here. So, um, there we go. Oh, we're gonna sweat. Anyways, okay, so now I have my nice secure hanger because this holds 30 pounds, so this isn't going anywhere. And there, whoops, there's my wreath. Okay, I like the colors better in person than I see them on camera for sure. Okay, um, but there's our wreath for today. So thank you for joining me. The replay will be available. Um, it'll be on Facebook, but easier to find on YouTube. I'll get that uploaded tomorrow. Um, if I also do have a video that just shows how to do this pedal, not yet on YouTube, but it will be. I recorded five videos today for pedals, so those are all going to make their way to YouTube. Um, so check out the pinned post for a link to my YouTube channel or just search at Carrie's Wreath Creations. That's the same name as my Facebook page. Be sure to give me a follow. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And be sure to check out that pinned post if you're looking for supplies and check out those affiliate links. Thank you so much for joining me everyone um, today, everybody. I really appreciate it. And uh, take care. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll check the comments for a couple days after this. Today is March 13th. It's approximately 7.20 p.m. So if you're not watching during that, you're watching a replay, I may or may not be able to answer your questions after that point. Don't want to check comments forever. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks. Take care. Bye.